Good evening and welcome to Sunset News on this Thursday evening. As always, we bring you news, community stories, economics, weather and sports. I am Aina Kweo. In the news tonight, livestock exports decline on a month-to-month -month basis by 37.43 percent from 22,214 heads of kettles exported in August to 13,899 heads exported in September. According to Midboard's monthly market watch, this decline is seasonal. However, it is seven times more than the decline experience last year and two times higher than what was experienced in the 2019 drought year, where live exports declined by 16.0%. It said that similar trends can be seen in the number of cattle slaughtered at exports abattoir, where slaughter declined by 2.37 percent from 11,662 cattle slaughtered to 11,385 heads slaughtered in September. According to the meat board, abattoir prices experienced decline across grades, but a higher than they were a year ago. It is said that similarly, further declines were experienced in winner prices. Winner prices experienced a monthly decline in of rather 10.83 percent from 27 Namibian dollars and 7 cents to 24 Namibian dollars and 11 cents in September 2023. Namibia experienced good rainfall in the year 2020, 2021 and 2022, which shows increases in price due to retention of winner by farmers reducing supply to local auctions. Prices are average at 36 Namibian dollars 49 cents during the period and have dropped by 33 Namibian dollars 92 cents to the current price level. The mid border said that compared to 2019 price levels, prices have only increased by a slight 2.90 percent from 23 Namibian dollars 43 cents to um, 24 Namibian dollars 11 cents. Prices are expected to dwindle below 25 Namibian dollars for the next month. The winner B2 price ratio also dropped to 39% during August 2023. Now we move over to our next story. If the profit of clean energy are to be believed, the panacea to Namibia and South Africa socio-economic challenges is green hydrogen. This perhaps explains the race of green hydrogen, which has sparked a development boom in Southern African development community, one that has come with an avalanche of promises coupled with high hopes. So far, Namibia and South Africa are moving faster as they are looking to transition to clean energy with the demand for green green hydrogen expected to skyrocket in the coming years. Politically, the two continue to sing the song of international collaboration when it comes to green hydrogen, but the situation on the ground paints a different picture. Both governments continue to experience common socio-economic challenges such as high unemployment, housing crisis, crime, and economies are growing at a snail pace. These challenges have led to a populace in a respective countries running out of patience with their governments. While the two neighbors continue to enjoy fruitful bilateral ties, South Africa has always enjoyed the upper hand over Namibia due to its big economic size, with Namibia offering a little commercial threat to industries next door. But the arrival of green hydrogen, labeled by many as the energy of the future, could ignite the competition between the two as each looks to cement its place as a dominant 
prominent player in the budding industry. Both countries are scrambling uh, for the same pool of experts and funders for multi-billion dollar industries. Seemingly, the two also continue to make huge promises to their people as to what benefits the green hydrogen industry will bring. For its part, Namibia is targeting production of 10 to 12 million tons per annum hydrogen equivalent, while its flagship hyphen Tsao Kaib has set a production target for 300,000 Namibian, 300,000 tons rather, per year. Across the Orange River, South Africa aims to produce 500,000 tons per annum of green hydrogen by 2030, while it ramps up production in the lead for 2040. During the ramp-up phase, Namibia and South Africa expect, expects rather to create 15,000 and 20,000 jobs respectively. Moving over to our next story, a group of aggrieved Erongoser community members visited the Usakos municipality and subsequently handed over a petition listing the unfair allocation of air vents by the council. On behalf of the council, Irene Simone, the mayor of Usakos, accepted the petition. According to the residents, they have been residing in their parents' homes ever since they were born and raised in Usakos, Erongosek. They apply for air vents every year, but they never get accepted. The mayor was notified by the worried locals that they had discovered that individuals in Erongosek had been given vacant plots of land and they were occupied with cleaning them up. The mayor advised the concerned group that the council ought to travel to the aforementioned air vents to investigate the matter. The topic will be discussed and potential remedies will be considered at the upcoming council meeting. Following his meeting with Erongo Serra residents and uh, receipts of the petition, the mayor visited Erongo right away to ascertain the nature of the land distribution issue. We want this type of behavior from our councillors, mayors and office bearers in local authority. We don't want talkers, we want doers, a member of the community said. In our story of the day, Metro Namibia continues to grow with the launch of its new fruits and vegetable grocer after the break. Neopaints has established a 67-year Namibian legacy, creating personalized paint solutions that blend quality and innovation for the Namibian people. We pride ourselves in being a 100% Namibian-owned company, investing in our country and our people by employing and empowering true Namibians. With every brush stroke, Neopaints commits to our quality guarantee and always delivering a coat of excellence. At Neopaints, we always stay true to our country. We are as Namibian as you. Metro Namibia continues to grow with the launch of its fruits and vegetable grocer Metro Fresh in Klein Ventuk. Shoppers can now enjoy specials from today until the 4th of November. Managing Director Brian Davis expressed a great enthusiasm over the entity's newly launched Metro Fresh grocery store and home shop Metro Home. Jamaima Debele reports. I'm the MD of, uh, of, of Metro and I'm incredibly proud to be able to tell everybody about our new venture that we have, uh, which is Metro Fresh. Uh, we, we haven't had a fresh offering in our hyperstore as yet uh, and now we're doing it. I'm incredibly proud of what my team has managed to accomplish here in a, in a very short period of time. And uh, I'm looking forward for everybody in Vintuk to actually come and have a look and see what, uh, what, this, what we have to offer in the store. Now, not only do we have the fresh store here, but we have a home store as well. 
which will, all the ladies would like to come and see it. So please come into the hype and come and have a look. Coming up next, Community Talk. Hello and welcome to today's Sports Rep Show. I am your host, Jesse Jackson Kauraita. In replay, Namibia, who had won the toss for the first time on this tour, Good day everyone, time for international sports news, starting off with tennis news, both on the WTA for women's and... In a significant move towards addressing Namibia's pressing housing challenges, the Development Workshop Namibia, in collaboration with MTC, has unveiled plans to provide 707 plots for low-income earners in Okakarara. The initiative, announced at the groundbreaking ceremony on Wednesday, aims to make affordable housing a reality for hundreds of Namibian families. The housing project supports by MTC's Corporate Social Investment Funding focuses on Okakarara Extension 7 and Hamakari Extension 2. The former will offer 294 plots for 59,636 Namibian dollars inclusive of water, siwa and electricity services. Hamakari Extension 2 features 413 plots priced at 14,000 Namibian dollars dollars 682 per plot with water with water supply provided development workshop reports are a promising response with 434 registered clients and 58 individuals having already completed payments for their plots and received allocations. MTC Chief Human Capital Corporate Affairs and Marketing Officer Tim Ekanjo commended the initiative and urged banking institutions to create financial packages tailored to assist low-income earners in building their homes on these affordable plots. This program now gives Namibian an opportunity to own a plot with a cost as little as 10,000 Namibian dollars to 40,000 Namibian dollars. Now it is up to the banks and other financial institutions to make it possible for these plot owners to build their homes on their plots. They should have packages tailored for low-income earners to be able to get the financial assistance to build their houses on these plots. According to Economic News, the Namibian Revenue Agency collected a net of 37 million Namibian dollars in tax after the break. <laughs> E-Ticket, your online ticket solution for events and event marketing, bringing you ease of mind and making sure that your event gets out there. events at nmh.com.na
The Namibia Revenue Agency collected a net amount of 37.4 billion Namibian dollars in tax at the end of September this year, representing 55.2% of the total revenue targeted for nearly 67.8 billion Namibian dollars for the financial year 2023-2024. The agency said the media revenue collection is over 9 billion Namibian dollars better than the 28.3 billion Namibian dollars generated at the same time in the financial year of 2022-2023. The major contributors to strong half year revenue generation were receipts from the Southern African Custom Union's individual income tax and value added tax. Now let's have a look at our economic indicators. The Namibian dollar trades for 22 Namibian dollars 99 cents to 1 British pound, 20 Namibian dollars 5 cents to 1 euro, 18 Namibian dollars 92 cents to 1 US dollar. All commodities have increased gold with 0.94%, platinum 0.80%, Brent crude oil 0.80% and copper 0.70%. Neopaints has established a 67-year Namibian legacy, creating personalized paint solutions that blend quality and innovation for the Namibian people. We pride ourselves in being a 100% Namibian-owned company, investing in our country and our people by employing and empowering true Namibians. With every brush stroke, Neopaints commits to our quality guarantee and always delivering a coat of excellence. At Neopaints, we always stay true to our country. We are as Namibian as you. Welcome to My Dot NA Cars, your ultimate destination for everything automotive. I am your host, Diana Mosta. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Discover the latest models, innovative technologies, and expert insights from our passionate hosts. Learn essential maintenance tips and get exclusive behind the scenes access to the automotive industry. Don't miss my dot NA cars on NTV every Thursday at 2100 hours. Tune in and ignite your passion for automobiles. The European Union Parliament awarded its annual Sakharov Prize for Freedom to of thought to Iranian woman Masa Amini who died in police custody last year and the Women, Life and Freedom Movement in Iran. It said earlier today Amini, who was 22, born in Iran's western province of Kurdistan, died in morality police custody in September last year after being arrested for allegedly floating, flaunting rather the Islamic Republic's mandatory dress code. While Amini's family said she had been killed by blows to her head and limbs, the authorities said she died due to existing medical problems. Her death sparked months of protests and spiraled into some of the worst political turmoil since 1979 Islamic Revolution. Have a look. So, dear colleagues, I am very proud to announce that the 2023 Saharov Prize for Freedom of Thought has been awarded to Gina Mahsamini and the Women, Life and Freedom Movement in Iran. The 16th of September 2022 is a date which will live in infamy and the brutal murder of 22-year-old Gina Mahsamini marked a turning point. It has triggered a women-led movement that is making history. The world has heard the chants of women, life, liberty. Three words 
that have become a rallying cry for all those standing up for equality, for dignity and for freedom in Iran. So let's today prize serve as our tribute to the brave and defiant women, men and young people in Iran who despite coming under increasing pressure are leading the push for change. The European Parliament hears you, the world sees you and we are with you. Zan Zendegi Azadi. British Prime Minister Rishi Sonak told the Israeli President Isaac Herzog that the UK stood in solidarity with Israel as, to, as the two rather, met earlier today, with Sonak adding that it was also important to provide humanitarian aid to the people of Gaza. He also stressed the need to provide aid to Gazans. Sunak landed in Tel Aviv hours after Biden left, carrying similar messages of support and condolences for the Israelis. Inside Gaza's health, officials say the bombing has so far killed nearly 3,500 people and wounded more than 12,000 people. Have a look. We are extremely grateful for your visit to Israel because you've come, you've come to visit Israel in our darkest hour, but we will overcome and prevail and it will be our finest hour. I'm basing myself on a quote from Winston Churchill because I'm reminded every day now about what my late father Chaim Herzog told me about the, the days of the Blitz in London. He was there as a student in Cambridge, the interest of all the nations of Europe. Thank you for the warm welcome. It is a privilege to be here at this difficult time for you and for your people, but I wanted to be here. And first and foremost, I wanted to express my solidarity with you and your country after you have suffered something unspeakable, a barbaric act of terrorism. And to your last point, we should call it what it is an act of terrorism perpetrated by an evil terrorist organization, Hamas. That's what I believe, mm -hmm. and that's what we will continue to say. And in that vein, we will stand with Israel. We will stand with you in solidarity with your people and your right to defend yourself, to bring security back to your country, to your people, to ensure the safe return of the hostages that have been taken. And I know we will talk further about mm -hmm. that later on, um, because that's the right thing to do. You have not just a right to do that, I think you have a, a duty to do that, to restore that security to your country. But I'm also grateful to you for the support that the Israeli government has provided to the families of British nationals who have been caught up in this tragedy. Uh, I very much appreciate that and I know we will continue to cooperate closely and support your efforts to ensure the safe return of all the hostages that Hamas have so cruelly taken. We will return shortly with a sports package courtesy of Sports Rep. Well, good day, viewers. On today's Sunset News brought to you by Sports Rep, while the country's football governing body is set for another contest in November as the FIFA Normalization Committee paves the way for a new leadership. However, it still remains unclear who is being considered at this stage, although several names have surfaced in discussion among those with the ability to nominate and vote. The name of prominent lawyer and former African uh, Stars boss Patrick Kauta well, has once again recently surfaced as a potential candidate to stand for the NFA presidency position. While Gauta, who attempted to stand for the position during the last elections, which saw Ranga Haikali win, is uh, alleged to have uh, garnered support from some of his old rivals. And the Blue Water FC chairman's name, uh, Robert Shimoshili, has been mentioned in several corridors as well. It is said Shimoshili, who had close ties with the pro progressive uh, forces over the years, continues to have a strong influence in terms of gaining support from friends within the football fraternity. Well, then that's, with that being said, that's all that we do have for you from the sports team. Uh, and we would like to wish you a good evening.
Here are the highlights from tonight's broadcast. Livestock exports decline, exports rather decline on a month-to-month -month basis by 37.43 percent from 22,214 heads of cattle exported in August to 13,899 heads exported in September. If the profits of clean energy are to be believed, the panacea to Namibia and South Africa's socio-economic challenges is green hydrogen. This perhaps explains the race for green hydrogen, which has sparked a development boom in Southern African development community, one that has become with an avalanche of promises coupled with high hopes. The country's football governing body is set for another contest in November as FIFA Normalization Committee paves the way for a new leadership. However, it remains unclear who is being considered at this stage, although several names have surfaced in discussions among those with the ability to nominate and vote. And with that, we've come to the end of tonight's broadcast. Please do make sure you join Sunset News on Facebook on all NMH platforms on weekdays as well as on our website, which is called oneup2.com. Sunset News screens on DSTV channel 285 as well as Go TV 25 every weekday from 7.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. This has been Sunset News. Please don't end your day without us. Good night.